Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you are joining us for this bus ride for the first time? Let me see your hands up. Quite a number of you for the first time. Well, welcome. This is probably one of the best choices that you have made so far in your life. And like all bus trips, when you have this many young people, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and you know, I mentioned last year, that's okay. Some people have this impression that, you know, we have fun in life and then we do what God wants us to do. And you can't have fun doing what God wants you to do. But uh, when you're doing what the Lord is asking you to do, that's when He's the happiest and that's when you're the happiest. And you can have fun while you're still doing something good. And so, uh, for those, uh, you know, like for those adults who are trying to get everyone in, in bed at, at the right time tonight and asleep and all that, you know, give them a break. You know, you can have your fun, but then give them a break. Make sure you pay attention. But we have a, it's going to be a, a long trip, and it's going to uh, be long days. But I, this is the best decision that you've made so far in your, in your life. Last year I uh, mentioned at this mass, I talked about an atheist. And so I thought, well, I might as well talk about the atheists again today. <laughs> but there was this atheist. He was um, a lover of nature. So he went out and he was taking a walk in this wooded area, just enjoying the trees and the birds. And all of a sudden, a bear came along unexpectedly. He wasn't waiting for this. And the bear started to growl and look very angry. And the guy got nervous. And he didn't know what to do. And the bear kept coming closer and closer to this atheist. And then just as he saw the bear about to lunge at him, he went, oh, God, help me. And the bear stopped in midair. And the bird stopped in the sky. And there wasn't a sound. And all of a sudden, he heard the voice of God. He said, I I'm, I'm wondering, he said, your whole life, you did not even believe I existed. You never talked to me. You never paid any attention to me. And now all of a sudden, you want me to help you? And he said, well, I, 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 real, I really need your help. You know, God, you really have to help me in this situation. He said, but really, wouldn't you be a hypocrite? You, you, certainly you don't want me to make you a Christian, do you? And a believer. He said, no, no, that, that would be tough for me because I'm an atheist. He said, but it would sure help if you could make that bear a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so God said, okay. The next thing you know, the birds start chirping again. The wind starts blowing. The bear moves out of its, its position but then stops for a moment gets on its knees, puts its paws together, and said, Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. <laughs> Prayer is so important in all of our lives. And even those sometimes who do not believe, or at least they think it's, it's the end thing to do is not to believe, even they at times, Turn to God. I think how many times, you know, some of our young Catholics, you know, that comes time to Saturday night or Sunday morning and they say, oh, prayer, mass, church, God? You know, I mean, I was too busy Saturday night. How can I get up on Sunday morning? Then Sunday afternoon, they have a football game and they're on the team. And what do they do? They all kneel down and they pray to God. They want God to listen. And the important thing is that God is always listening. He's always waiting to hear our petitions. He's always waiting to hear our voice. He's always waiting to receive our prayer. God is always waiting for that. Uh, that's that first reading that we listened to today, describing the meeting tent and the place where they used to offer sacrifices to God, that the, the priest would go in and at certain times go into the holiest place there and sprinkle the blood of animals as a prayer to God, that God would help them and guide them in life. And in that first reading, you listened and it was explained that actually Jesus is the new priest. 
who when he goes into that Holy of Holies doesn't sprinkle the blood of animals. It's actually his own blood that is shed. That Jesus shed his own blood for us, for our sins, for our needs, for our intercessions. He is the sacrifice. That Jesus doesn't just offer sacrifices, he is the sacrifice. Jesus becomes the prayer. He's the one who always is speaking to the Heavenly Father on our behalf. That's why we always at Mass say it's in Him and with Him and through Him. Everything that we do is always through Jesus. And He is that constant prayer. We have an opportunity now to pray as well. And in a sense to pray with our lives, but I don't think anybody's going to shed any blood on this trip. I hope not. I had a paper cut this morning, so that might be the blood that I have. That's what I'm giving up today. But we're not going to offer our blood, but we are going to pray. We're going to pray through the saving blood of Jesus. We're going to pray that all of us will come to our senses. I know as we get on these buses and we go out, out to Washington and walk those streets and we're demonstrating, you know, the sovereignty of God. We're, we're demonstrating that God is the, is the power of all life. That God is the giver and taker of all life. And we want people to listen to us and to understand that. But you know, they understand it better when they see that our entire lives are demonstrating that God is the power in our life. I mean, we can't, we can't come and ask people to listen to us if we're not living in our own lives those things that God is asking us to do. How many times have you prayed for something that really you wonder how God could really help you? Like you just didn't study for an exam. You just didn't study. And then the exam comes along and say, Dear God, help me pass this exam. In other words, reward, reward my irresponsibility. Or when you're doing something and you know that your parents do not want you to do it, and you do it anyway, and now all of a sudden there's that glimpse that maybe they're going to find out that you did it, and you say, dear God, don't let mom or dad know what I just did. <laughs> As if God's going to hear that prayer. <clears throat> but here's the important thing. You know you can go to God, and we do it all the time. We go to God for good things, and we go to God even if we don't have the best of intentions. And the important thing to remember is God is always listening. He's always there. And what we need to remember is that we need to kind of allow our lives to be directed by God. And so therefore, whatever if we're doing what God wants us to do, and we ask God to help us do it, well... Sure, he's going to help us do it. It's what he wants us to do. If we're doing things that are not what God wants us to do, and we're praying and asking God to help us. You know, anybody who actually prays that abortion would be legalized, continue to be legalized in America, anybody, could you imagine that they actually believe that they could pray to God and God will answer that prayer? You no, know, we're on God's side on this. And that's what we're doing. We're praying to the Lord. In the gospel account, it's a, you know, it's a short account and it, it, it ends in a funny way, but you know, they thought Jesus was a madman. They thought he was crazy. They thought he was a nut. When some people are going to think we're crazy and we're nuts for what we're doing. I mean, on, on these cold days, we can be somewhere else instead of on the streets of Washington. And, and there are people who will ridicule you from the side. There are some people who will be protesting against what it is that we're standing up for. And you know, all that means is we are now one with Jesus. We're one with that Jesus who by his own blood suffered that we might follow the will of God and that our sins might be forgiven. That's why I told you in the beginning, this is the best decision that you've made. Not just because of this one event, but because of your belief that your prayer and your presence and your standing up for people you do not even know makes a difference. As we continue in this Mass, we ask the Lord to give us a safe journey, help us to have a lot of fun, 
Help us to be serious on Monday when the time comes for us to, uh, to demonstrate our trust in God and our, our solidarity with these young infants who are about to be born. And we ask the Lord to protect us, but also we ask the Lord to help us to truly pray with authenticity. That all of our prayer is truly a prayer honoring what God wants of us in our lives. And as, as, we, ask, as we ask our Lord for the grace of that in this Mass, we ask our Lord Jesus to, in a very special way, bless those bus drivers, huh? Make sure they get us there safely. God love you.